It would appear that we're back for Comics Are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live at the Ann Arbor District Library Netcast Studio in uh, lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan, on the corner of 5th and William, uh, AEDL.org. My name is Jersey Droz. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, and we're about to kick off our new season of the show, uh, even though this is episode, what, 44 or something like that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a new year, new, new show, new equipment coming in that you can see if you're watching it on the video. Uh, and thanks, AADL.org. And, uh, and we got, uh, new guests. Well, old returning guests. But, uh, so, should I just introduce you guys? And then we'll get to our topic. <laughs> 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 what do you say? Hey, Steph, haven't talked to you in hey, a long time. Um, well, if you, if you listened to me when I was 16, you might remember me. Yeah, um, yeah, this is a long time ago. We go back. Um, we, go we go way, way back. back. We we're, go way back. We're really. tight. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was Jersey student in high school. I grew up in Ann Arbor, um, and now I live in New York. But um, Stephanie Mannheim, I should say, yeah, StephanieManheim.com. Um, and I do I do mini comics. This is here. I'm gonna put this here. This is my oh, comic. Oh yeah. Um, Nate the Nonconformist is one of the many mini comics I do. This is proud the newest one. So. Um, what is the, let's leave it there for a second while oh, we talk okay. about it, because what is Nate the Nonconformist? It's about a teenager who tries, like, way too hard to be cool and rebel and be a punk. <laughs> so, but he's, like, not very good at it. So his idea of rebellion is, like, um, like going to Hot Topic or something, <laughs> like, and he thinks he's, like, such a rebel. Um, so basically, and, and yelling at everybody else around him for being conformist. Yeah. And and what I love about these stories is typically the, the people who he's yelling at are not that bad people. They're just nice guys yeah. who just like music and whatever. Yeah. But he's like, you can't borrow my albums or what? Oh, which album was it? I don't remember. But Rocket to Russia was that? <laughs> <one>? <laughs> but it also, as I said before, anybody who's listened to my stuff for any amount of time uh, knows that uh, you draw the most disgusting kissing scenes in the history of comics. Oh, well, thank you, Jersey. <laughs> That's um, what you'll be known for. That's going to be on your. your no, you know what? I'm known. I'm known for the. Um, I'm known for the chests. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that too. And, in, in your comments. Um, they. I'm intrigued. Women have kind of grandmother-like chests. <laughs> let me let me see if I can find an example in here. Oh, but, the end paper here is like pus and. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Oh. Yeah, but you can find my work at stephaniemanheim.com, and I'm also in a cartooning collective, um, oh, New York City spoons. based, called Coffee Spoons Comics. With, tighter on the mic, kiddo. Uh, with other college students. Um, so, yeah. So here's like typical breasts <laughs> I draw. Jeez, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, we're we're going to talk more about your fascination with with very very. Uh, Sometimes disturbing comics, but always awesome comics. Well, thank uh, you. And uh, but we also should say that uh, you're a former Ann Arbor mm -hmm. uh, resident. You now yeah. live in New York City. I now live in New York City. Um, Doing I go to... exciting stuff mm -hmm. in New York City. Yeah, so it's really great. You, work, um, you worked with Tom Hart. I worked with Tom Hart before he moved to Florida, and he started <laughs> the Sequential Artist Workshop. And um, just want to say, Tom is one of the best teachers I've I mean you too but Tom is one of the best <laughs> teachers I have and I really um he and his wife have been going through some rough times recently and I yeah. really hope they um I really wish the best for them right now Lauren Weinstein started a fund for that mm -hmm. yes uh yeah. yes Tom Hart and his wife uh they lost their their young daughter uh recently oh. and uh, Lauren Weinstein started a fund and and it, uh, there was a big outpouring for them and yeah, yeah our hearts go out to both mm -hmm. of them hope, hope and actually well. at this point um I think the fund is over and they've raised a lot of money and now they want you to donate to um this charity about um sudden death and childhood i don't know exactly the website you could probably go to lauren's website and check that lauren out laurenweinstein.com i believe i think is, so yes it is yeah it is. okay mm -hmm. so yeah you can go there for more information about that but yes uh a great talent and, and, and a terrible loss in our hearts yeah. to him uh, you also work on, geez, what don't you do? You work on the Columbia Daily Spectator mm -hmm. as, a, as a cartoonist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cartoonist. That's where I go Good to school. You. Yeah, so I'm a cartoonist there, an illustrator. Um, and, um, yeah, I also I kind of get other people, kind of try to rope other people in to illustrate stuff too. Um, so you subcontract. Uh, whatever that means, <laughs> I do it. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, and I also got to intern at uh, Center for Cartoon Studies last summer, and I also got to work at uh, Augenblick Augen Studios. Augen yeah, tell Studios. us about this. You blogged about this. Uh, it looked like so an amazing I, w I worked at Augenblick Studios um, last spring and summer on the show Ugly Americans, which was really great. Um, and, I mean, that's this is the only uh, studio I've actually worked for, so I don't really know what it's like to work for, like, a bigger studio. But this was a very small, kind of independent studio. Um, and they had really great people working for them, and a lot of people were into, um, like, indie comics. And, actually, the owner of the studio, studio Aaron Auchenblick, um, got a Zarek Grant um, back in the day. And he's really awesome. And then they had uh, Jason Little work there and Bob Sikoriak, who... I guess he goes by R. Sikoriak in the books that he publishes, but um, they both work there, and they were, um, they both do indie comics, and the people there were so great. And I did, like, in-betweens and stuff, background cleanup. In-betweens. <laughs> Explain that for those who don't know anything about animation. What so is basically, like, the lead animators do, like, the main kind of frames, and then... Um, like, the, like the key frames, the like key the key frames, moments. And then I, the I have animation. to go in and do the like in between stuff. So like if I like like a keyframe would be I reach for my bottle of water. That's your keyframe one. Yeah. Keyframe two, I'm drinking the water. Yeah. You you poor sap. You gotta draw all <laughs> gotta the draw that. in between. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually I learned a lot about um I learned a lot about just like having a very clean drawing and being able to draw off like model sheets and stuff like that. Mm. Um I realized because there's a point when um, if you can like really draw, if you really understand like how the body works in life drawing and stuff. I mean, I don't draw people that look anything like real people, but like um, I feel like if you understand how the body works, you can kind of adapt to any style, which is cool. So you have a, a deeper appreciation for knowing your fundamentals, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because, like, you know, you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard when you were in art school or when you were in high school, for that matter. Yeah. You hear I was I was never in art school. Just just uh, disclosure, I'm a sociology major, actually. I'm not studying art. So, um, and I don't go to school. Because you already got a down pat. You don't need to study art in school, right? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> I... I <laughs> I got into art school and I had to make the big decision where do I go to art school or do I just go to um, get like a liberal arts education and study art, everything I do outside of school is art. I and bet, I chose the latter. Bet, I bet your mm. instructors, uh, like people like Tom Hart, probably told you that having, yeah. uh, having a background in this stuff is important if you I, want to be a, well, a graphic novelist. Tom actually, Tom told me... Um, he said, don't go to art school. That's what he said. Um, and Lauren, but, but do Lauren, support the sequential art school. <laughs> 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 Lauren, all right, the, I mean, like, yeah, um, yeah, Tom, but, but I mean, he, he recommends different things to different people, and he, he just... Sure, depending on, the, on, the, on the, the student, yes. Yeah, depending the, on the student. Um, I know people who go to art school and love it, and... I probably would love it too, but I also wanted um, the chance to learn other stuff that I probably wouldn't be motivated enough to learn on my own. And getting a liberal uh, arts degree and is going to broaden your experiences, degree. make you a better writer. And, yep. you know, yeah, and all of that. In, yeah, yeah. All that um, stuff. So <laughs> I want to ask Gail Williams, who's returning to the show, okay. <laughs> Gail uh, of uh, patbird.gailsar.com, uh, Kelvin on the Twitters. <laughs> Former New York City resident, now living in Ann Arbor. We swapped. So, we swapped. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, when did you move here? Um, last uh, August, I think. So we overlap like a year in New York. Smooth. Oh my god. And yet, I never. <laughs> oh my bad. <laughs> so I'm wondering. I'm wondering, Gail, are, are you missing New York City right now, listening to all of Stephanie's stories, <laughs> or is Ann Arbor pretty darn cool in its own right? Tell me. It's, it's pretty they're cool. like, yeah, they're yeah. both pretty darn cool, actually. <laughs> yeah. It, it's more about like the people you meet and what you get to do. I think. Yeah. End of things. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. So, um, and Gail, you're also going to be doing uh, a presentation at one of our future comics artist forums here, right? I am, yeah, in May. Is that right? May? That okay, is, yeah. You're going to be, doing a, some, be some digital... talking about flatting comics digitally. A, fl a presentation on flatting comics digitally, which mm -hmm. is, uh, there's there's a science to it, actually, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there's like a, a <laughs> methodology to it, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you know, keeping speed up. Uh, Doing it so that the person you're doing it for, you know, it's most convenient for them, I think, is an important thing. Unless it's just for you, in which case, go crazy. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. But if you're doing it for somebody else, or even if you're doing it for yourself, having some kind of a system in place will make mm -hmm. sure that it's easy for you to edit it after the fact. Oh, definitely. Uh, early on, I would flat my pages and then do the editing on the color flats. 
And then when it went, when it's time to go back and edit the the color, like oh, this needs to be purple or this mm-hmm. needs to be red. It's like oh no, <laughs> breaking out the lasso tool quite a bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to that because you you did some flatting for me and and I was mightily impressed with how oh, logical thanks. and clear they were. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we should talk about petbird.gelser.com. What's that comic all about? Um, it is about a bird and dinosaur who are based on me and my boyfriend having their crazy adventures and living. Li- it's pretty um, autobio with an occasional fantastical twist. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. Um... Oh, sorry. <laughs> we got to meet some of, some of your um, future in laws uh, in, in, in some of the recent stories. Well, no, it was your dad, wasn't it, who was the, the, the crazy the dinosaur with the beard? <laughs> yeah. Uh, who, who does some pretty wild things in the comics. Uh-huh, right? so. uh-huh. Yeah, he, he looks a lot like Santa in person, so it was fun to take that and go crazy with it. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, it's. it's it is a tough thing to describe. It is fantasy, but it is autobio. But it's it's mm-hmm. autobio with with uh, focusing on like the lighter, funnier moments and sillier moments of life, right? Not, yeah, it's yeah. not you sitting in a park going, "Oh, life sucks." <laughs> no, that would be no. Fun. Those are the books I'm recommending. <laughs> 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 so yes, okay. I want to back up and talk about topic real quick because we spent a little bit of time introducing you guys, uh, reintroducing you guys to everybody. Um, since this was the first episode of the new season, I thought, well, let's back up and do a talk on why comics are so great. And Stephanie, you and I were talking on the phone recently, mm-hmm. uh, and you were talking about how it's weird sometimes how so ma- comics has all of these different little camps, right? Yeah. You've got mm-hmm. like web cartoonists, you've got indie cartoonists, you've got people who work in you know, the Marvel DC direct market. Um, then you have people who call themselves graphic novelists, and all these people aren't aware of each other, and 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 uh, yeah. you know mm-hmm. whether mm-hmm. whether it's intentional or not. Yeah. And it was a reminder to me that so many people. I mean, as a guy who does a lot of workshops and advocacy in the Ann Arbor area, I meet so many people who are like, "Oh yeah, uh, oh there was an article actually. I just posted on Twitter. I'll have to look it up, find the link. Uh, somebody wrote an article about like uh, he interviewed a guy uh, why he didn't read comics. Oh, and, I read that. <laughs> did you read that? Yeah, like, you want to tell us about it? What did that guy talk about? I mean, it was really, it was really upsetting to read. It was. It was just like I, I don't want to read about what guys dressing up in tights and then wrestling. What is this? Did you watch WWE as a kid? Well, yeah. But that's different. Than you wore a cape, you know? Yeah, and, and then, yeah. Like, the, the, the guy who wrote the article inserted a picture of Hulk Hogan wearing a big cape with like a feather boa kind of thing. But yeah, but it was basically this guy had all these preconceived notions that comics like so many adults that comics is just a bunch of people in their underwear beating well each even other. even children mm-hmm. i mean not i'm not saying like when i was a kid i thought all comics were people beating them up but i didn't know about like a lo- I, I mean the only comics i read as a kid were um comic strips and nickelodeon magazines so i mean yeah. lots of people all ages don't know that much about comics yeah let's talk about because when i first met you steph you were what 14 oh my god oh Whoa. geez you're gonna embarrass me so much <laughs> what? What? story time <laughs> you're gonna tell me about my like horrible phases and what i used to read <laughs> <laughs> your blossom phase no 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 i mean like, hey yeah. we all gotta st- we okay all right point, all right. right okay all right go so- go ahead <laughs> The secret's out. <laughs> this is not to embarrass you because actually you liked good stuff. It's just okay. you liked manga, right? Like yeah. a lot of girls that age. Yeah. yeah. You know, your entry point was manga. And I was mm-hmm. excited about it because yeah. I was excited that there was this manga uh, like craze in the United States because I saw yeah. so many girls showing up to my well, college workshops. Um, the thing yeah. is, like, yeah, I became like, I turned like, around when I turned like 11, 12 or so, there was like this really big manga boom and they were all suddenly like the... Uh, manga section in like Barnes and Noble borders or whatever like got enormous and right like a year or so after that I had my bat mitzvah and I got all these like borders gift cards which I mean now would be useless <laughs> but um I went and I was like oh my god look look at all these comics and like oh I can relate to some of the stuff in these I'm gonna buy them so I was really excited, and some of it was terrible, and some of it was really great. So, like Rumiko yeah. Takahashi, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was um, basically all I really knew about comics at that point. Sure, Because it was everywhere. Course. Yeah, I mean, no. I know it's it's nothing to be ashamed of. But yeah, it, I mean, it's not, because it, that's that's where they were accessible. That's where yeah. you could find mm-hmm. them, right? Because yeah. like, in, in something I ask in a lot of my comics workshops when I'm teaching teens, I say, Does, who here knows what their local comic store is? And outside of Ann Arbor, I mean, everybody knows about the Vault of Midnight in Ann Arbor. But yeah. uh, outside of Ann Arbor, everybody's like, huh, what? Where did I find a comic store? Yeah. I well, go to Borders. Well, the problem is there, there aren't that many good comic stores. There right. are a lot of um, comic book stores that aren't very accessible to like a, a person who's like new to comics and wants to come in and find something like 
a lot of times the people working there aren't going to be as friendly as they could be to like a the, new the, we, there was even some bad experiences locally once yeah. upon a time not at vault but at oh other yeah places. well yeah. vault is definitely one of the better stores I've yeah been yeah it is yeah. it is but yeah but anyway not all stores are created equal but anyway i want to yeah. fast forward just a couple years so i meet you 14 and i and i mentioned rumiko takahashi in yeah. one of my classes and you went oh, oh i love this stuff <laughs> and uh Fast forward just like four years later. No, it was like two years. two years. I didn't see you for like a year. <laughs> okay. And then I come back. I'm like 15, and I just discovered Peter Bag, and I was like, "Oh, hey, Jersey, have you heard of this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I've, I've read this." <laughs> and stuff. you were like, oh, "You, re- you I, 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 I thought you were Peter like Bag. really just." I remember no. you being really disturbed when I, I was get, disturbed showed. that there was a 16 year old girl showing me some of the stuff that was in some well, of these what, indie comics. Was, if I were a 16 year old boy, would you be disturbed by yes, that? Yes, I would. Okay. I was, <laughs> I would. I'd say, but, but at the same time, I understood. Like, you know, it's like when you're th- that age, this stuff is. Com- well, I don't want to even go into that psychology. What, what's interesting to me is that here you were just a couple years before, and you were the poster child for the manga craze. Ah, we can talk about Takahashi Kawaii. And then, oh, gee. No, no, <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, all right. Back up, back up. Okay. <laughs> That was a lie. I never, I never said kawaii. Yeah. I didn't dress up in co- costumes. No, I, all right. Okay. I actually, all right. Um, I actually really did not like the um, community. I mean, there are good things about it, but I was pretty uncomfortable with the community surrounding manga and excitable. Yeah, it was. Uh, too, Pretty, it was too much for me. It was. I was totally yeah. not trying to put you on the defensive with this stuff. I right. promise. You. <laughs> what I was trying to describe was is that here is an excellent example of somebody whose entry point was manga, and then a couple years later, you found the thing that gripped you and yeah. took you by the throat, and really defined where you went as an artist for like the yeah. you know where your career is going. And so you you discovered independent comics like Peter Bag, uh, Daniel Klaus, uh, what else? Uh, oh, Robert Crumb. Robert oh, Crumb yeah. was a big one that you kept bringing into well, my house. My dad, when I turned seventeen, my dad who was um he grew up in new york and like he like late 60s early 70s he was a teenager and um he um he had all these crumb comics from then so he gave those to me when i turned 17 and those were i thought those were really really inspired me yeah Yeah. so like you wouldn't have written nate the nonconformist when you were 14 is what i'm saying oh no of well of course not no i wouldn't have so yeah so my point is that comics has a, a rich and varied it's not a genre, it is a medium, and there's lots and lots to be chosen from. And, and just like books, and just like films and everything, we know this, that there's something for everybody. So to demonstrate that fact, this is the episode we do, this is our advocacy episode to really st- uh, you know, make the statement that comics are indeed great. We brought a whole bunch of different comics to talk about. Instead of doing it being like a review show of like, hey, what's in previews this week? No, we're, <laughs> we're going to dig all over the spectrum of comics, and we're going to, uh, you know, old, new, uh, web, uh, print only, and we're going to talk about who, who wants to start with something that just that, that they just are insufferable about that you just can't stop talking about this book what's a book that you guys have read that you, that you brought today that you just uh, can't get enough of or do you want me to start go Steph oh okay <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna just go with my favorite which is um, Peter Bags buddy does Seattle um, and actually this along with I'm gonna kind of put these two together um, the Bradleys and Buddy Does Seattle. Both in the um, Arbor District Libraries collection. Which are both, I took them from the, I left them at my uh, place in New York, and I didn't know I was going to do this podcast. Still, but by the way, I'm visiting my family right now, so um, <laughs> I left my stuff at my place, and then I called Jersey, and he's like, want to be on a podcast? So I kind of grabbed these from the library. But um, this is probably my favorite comic ever, and um, it's about... Basically, it's about this guy, Buddy Bradley, and um, this first book here, The Bradleys. He's a teenager. So here he is. He's a teenager. He's like a pimply teenager and kind of like, um, kind of just like a regular kind of slacker, moody, like pot-smoking teenager. And he, this is about him and his dysfunctional family. And this book um, completely changed my life, basically. Um, How so? So... I was, like, 16, and I was just, like, like this cynical, like, bitter 16-year-old. And I was looking, I was, like, couldn't really find any comics that I really, like, really liked, really spoke to me. And then I picked this up, 
and I looked so at it. So this speaks to the cynical 16-year-old. How so? What does he do? What does he do with, with the art and the writing that makes well, you... Well, all right. Well, what I love about the... I mean, this this speaks to anybody. This I, I like this even more. I mean, I could say that I like this even more now. I just feel like I found this at the right time, um, at the right time in my life. Um, but this is really great because basically um, he just... Everybody in his comics just go crazy. Um, very they, wild, very characters, wild right? cartoony art. I mean, there's like a lot of there's kind of like a Tex Avery thing going on here, but then it's also just that there's something there's something really unique. They just really go crazy, um, and it's it's just like you really. I feel like you really um, understand kind of the underlying emotions with all of it, um, and it's just. Even though it's super exaggerated and stuff, there's something just really realistic just about, like, they really pinpoint how these people feel, and there's just this kind of rage that everybody has. It's, it's like Tex really Avery great. art that doesn't shy away from, like, the, the worst in people. Too, yeah, right? it's just, mm -hmm. it's it's really just, it's kind of grotesque, but, like, um, also really appealing at the same there, time. There's... See, you like some artists who do a really good job of capturing the grotesque beautifully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, like Basil Wolverton, Basil stuff Wolverton, like that. Johnny uh, Ryan, our, our crumb, our yeah, crumb, where, yep. where there's like a, like a or or oh, what was the other one? Black Hole. Uh, uh, Charles Burns. Charles Burns. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. he yeah, he's yeah. a even like he's crazy because he does <laughs> his. <laughs> I mean, like his ink work is gorgeous, and then he'll draw people with like boils on their faces and stuff. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. There's like he's this weird incredible. dichotomy of like exquisite yeah. disgustingness yeah. or something like that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. What kind of music would you say would like be a good soundtrack for uh, a Peter Bag comic? Like if you like this I kind would of music, say, you like this. Well, I, I was gonna say I would gonna say like the Ramones would be a good kind of soundtrack, but I don't. But their approach to music was very is very different from Peter Bag's approach to comics. Just in that he's very. All right, this is going to sound super nerdy. He's like <laughs> <laughs> this is the show to do it. Yeah. Oh my god! All right, so they. There's there's this very like um I feel like if somebody really did a comic that with the soundtrack of the Ramones it would be drawn a lot simpler and a lot more like you don't need to know how to draw. To <laughs> <laughs> Even though I, I mean I love the Ramones but um but I don't know, it has it has the same kind of energy. Um Yeah. It just has this very very kind of fast paced and just kind of wild, really great, um, really fun. And um, so this was a really great book. And then, well, well let me ask wait. you also this: I want for the, per, the 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 reader who has not read this, has never heard of Peter Bag, because you know yeah. some people haven't. Uh, what what we said? If you like the Ramones, you probably like Peter yeah. Bag. Mm -hmm. What what kind of movie? If if what if what would your favorite movie have to be to enjoy a Peter well, I would Bag say, book? say um, I don't know, like like a Kevin Smith film or something like that. Just like I don't know, that's kind of different, but. Because th that's not less this book and more like Buddy Does Seattle because this is about um, people in their twenties and kind of slackers. So okay, uh, yeah. But but what about something like 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 Juno or Juno? Um, Juno could work because it's got that kind of like dry wit to it. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean Juno. Yeah, Juno. I can see that too. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't yeah. compare it directly to Juno, but I'm just saying like yeah, if no, you enjoy that. No, I can that. see that if you're if you're into like kind of like weird kind of more weirder films then. Oh, what was that? What was that other new indie movie that I just saw? Like any indie movie with like young twenty somethings with like a lot of laurels on it, you'd probably enjoy like a Peter Bag yeah. book, yeah, right? Yeah, you um, know, like that that new one about like the young couple and then uh, they're they're or they're in like their mid thirties, oh, yeah, yeah, and they, and they all talk in monotone like this, and they're very sad, and then she gets pregnant, and they don't know what they're gonna do, and they got a cat, and the cat talks. <laughs> in the <story>. Wait, what? <laughs> you you don't talk about <laughs> Duke now? No. <laughs> No, like the, 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 the trailer starts with the cat talking. Have you seen this, Gail? You know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about? I forget yeah. what it's called. The, Somebody the in the chat thing, can help me The out only maybe. thing I can think of is Marmaduke. <laughs> <laughs> the cat doesn't actually, the cat actually like kind of narrates part of the story in this ironic wow, way. But. I've, I've actually, I've never heard of this. I, I don't know. It, it, I don't, I don't really go out to the movies that much anymore because it's so expensive. It, well, it's, it and also expensive. it's so expensive in New York. Um, <laughs> how so much I is a movie in New York? Geez, like $14 or yeah, something. I don't even want to How much is the popcorn? Five at least. So okay, and then the soda. You call it soda there, right? Yeah. I, well, I, like <laughs> I, I called it I called it soda growing up too, because my parents, my dad's from New York and my mom's from Philly, 
Well, um, and, and and soda is is a beverage, they whereas both pop call is it your soda. dad. They both called it soda. So okay, I so, grew you up, so you grew so you grew up soda. using the correct word. Yeah, I call it the real thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so you don't go to movies much. But anyway, okay, so we got that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna but, kick. Well, go ahead. What um, you but I'm kind of gonna move on to. Uh, it kind of moves. Is, is it future. okay if I kind of go into the this? The future is the name of that <laughs> film I was talking about. Uh, oh, okay. Lo- Lorian in the chat. Thanks, Lori. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, the, the film is called The Future. If you like people walking around with sad, uh, blank expressions and mumbling well, and talking I'm cat full of emotion. Well, I wouldn't would say, I, buddy, like the Peter Bag. I wouldn't say is very like mumbly though, or like no, it's not. navel gazing or anything. No, it's a lot. Just look at the it's cover. It's a lot I mean. more kind of just loud and um, a lot more kind of. I don't know, out, like, just, like, crazy. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, um, it is, it's, it, it's more, like, has, like, kind of, like, the energy of, like, the Muppet Show or something, but, like, like yeah. or, like, with, like, the, the, the attitude yeah, of definitely. the Ramones. Yeah, right? definitely. There we yeah, go. It's got, it's got the, <laughs> if the Muppets and Tex Avery and the Ramones kind of became one. So um, there we go. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I think Peter Bag's stuff is cool. I don't think his stuff is awful. I, you know, I, was, I was surprised. I was surprised that such a young, sweet girl who loved Rumiko Takahashi suddenly said, look what I like now. And I went, what? Where did that come well, from? Well, I don't know if you remember. Well, this is kind of when I was into manga. I started out reading, like, the shoujo, like, magical girl stuff. I was, like, 11. I am. And then I started, like... I was like, ooh, there's like more more stuff out here I can read. And I started reading kind of weirder stuff and I feel like by the end I was reading like like what, Chroma Marty High School or whatever. Oh, which is yeah. just about like mm. these these thugs that like just <laughs> <laughs> like They are ridiculous. They're, they're like really stupid and it was and like Doctor Slump, which is about like talking poop and stuff. Yeah, like, Doctor Slump. <laughs> so I, I started I, I I feel like I, I kinda started reading like the more and more like kind of weird stuff as I went on with that and then I kind of just jumped over to this. Okay, but we're going to we, we got to move we gotta <laughs> got to move fast. So <laughs> All right, uh, one, more on one more thing. One more thing. All right, so this this book is about sorry, we we kind of went off on a tangent, but this <laughs> book is about um Buddy is Buddy's 24. He lives in Seattle. Um and basically um it's really great because it's it's so true to life, even though it's so exaggerated. Um, it basically captures everything about being in your 20s, like early 20s, and just like kind of like being broke and having bad roommates and just like and, all of and that. And losing your stuff over things, right? Like, yeah, like just <laughs> <laughs> all of that. And I mean, like I loved this when I was a teenager. I read this again this year and I could relate to it even more. And I feel like by read it again when I'm 24 I'll like it even better so all right so I want to do a really fast one so on a related note to show you that I'm not a total square and I don't just uh (laughs) you know watch Jim Henson movies night and day uh Eddie Campbell the fate of the artist uh put up by first second I believe I want to say first second did this yes they did and it's a collection of you know vignettes and little like slice of life moments by Eddie Campbell uh but I'll tell you my favorite strips in it is the angry cook strips, which are about his wife, like where somebody pleasantly asks her to do something, like, oh, could you make spaghetti? And she completely loses her marbles. Every strip is her <laughs> swearing, is the constant stream of swears, and, and hitting things and smashing things, and then losing her stuff at the end, uh, completely losing her mind. Uh, but it's, it's a beautiful book with lots of different kinds of art. He's got all these little th- different send-ups to different kinds of comic strips, where he does these fake comic strips called Honey Bee and Our Problem Child. And then even little Fumetti strips in here where I believe he's talking with his daughter. Uh, he has conversations with his daughter, and he, he turns it into a comic strip as well. Eddie Campbell's most known for doing um, From Hell, the Alan Moore yeah, comic yeah. graphic novel. Uh, he also did a comic series in the late 80s, early 90s called Bacchus, which was the story of the Roman god come down to earth and getting involved in mafia wars with the eyeball kid. And fantastic series, fantastic <laughs> book. I love his art. He's got like this really expressive, very squiggly kind of art style. I think you'd, you'd if you haven't read him stuff, I think you'd actually like him. Oh, yeah. But also just very introspective and thoughtful and uh, definitely for grown-ups. Not, not something that I think that a kid would really get or, or like very much. But uh, if, you're, if you're an adult looking for a thoughtful, introspective book, book uh, with a lot of really clever wit. Uh, Fate of the Artist by Eddie Campbell is what I would... It, it's in the library's collection. So, okay. Oh. Gail, you're up. Okay. Um, 20th Century Boys. Um, it is not a conventional manga style. I'll start off by saying that. 
Um, this is by Noki Urasawa. Um, he's also done a Pluto and Monster, so he's very oh, like gosh, yeah. suspense thriller unfolding of brilliant plot kind of deal. So this one's about um, a uh, failed rock star convenience store owner named Kenji, whose um, childhood friend commits suicide. He thinks there's more to it, starts piecing together clues, um, and it turns out there's this cult whose actions are oddly similar to games that he and his friends played as kids. So he has to try and like stop world destruction and piece together the clues in time and you save the world. It's cool. <laughs> okay, what well, what kind of music would you compare this to? Ooh, um, well, it's in the title, so I'm going to say T-Rex. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, what? Yeah, yeah. A lot of it is said in the uh, early 70s, late 60s. So very rock and roll, love and peace. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Uh, what kind of, what kind of uh, film would you say, like, if you love this film, you should read this book? Ooh, uh... I know it's toughy. A lot, a lot of a lot of really good manga kind of mm -hmm. defies <laughs> our um, our genre expectations. Right, you can't just plug it into some like blockbuster like, <laughs> like Born Identity. You're gonna love 20th Century Boys. Yeah, right? yeah. Just like definitely something with like an intricate plot, lots of twists and turns, um, suspenseful and exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, uh, Urasawa's characterization the what he mm -hmm. does with his character's faces is oh, really definitely. really good he can he can like do something with like a twist of a lift to make you go like it'll either break your heart or make you laugh hysterically mm -hmm. you know uh so it's it's partially see this is something that i think is like an analogy we can make i don't like to make comics to film analogies too often because i think it confuses people and i also like to point out the distinctions between comics and film but if we accept the fact that the cartoonist's job in a comic is to act for the characters you're mm -hmm. every actor on the stage right then we should point to that when, like, say, like Buddy Bradley or uh, rather Peter Bags stuff, very ham fisted acting, yeah. very <laughs> scream, throw everything up in the air kind of acting. Whereas Urasawa stuff is a little bit more subdued, a little bit more layered, a little bit more like Liam Neeson kind of acting, mm -hmm. maybe. Does that seem like a fair comparison, Gail? Seems fair to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lightning round. We're going to, we only got 15 Ooh. minutes before uh, uh, Eli gets here. So, what do you got next, Stephanie? All right, so next, this is a little more of a uh, navel gazing kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Brown, Little Things. Um, he's written a lot of books, but I'd recommend this as a starter if you've never read Jeffrey Brown because um, I feel like his artwork getting more polished. It's, it's all pretty rough. He, he has. Um, a lot of art training, but he purposely decided to draw in this very rough style, so it looks like it's out of his sketchbook. Or he actually does draw it in his sketchbook, and basically these are all uh, short stories from his life. Um, what kind of stories from his life? About like breakups or just like kind of just everyday things that happen to him. Or there's one with a car accident in here. Are these knitted together into like one solid narrative, or is it like a um, series of shorts? No, this is more of a sh series of short, different narratives. Some of his okay. books, some of his books have one long narrative, um, and a lot of his. He's probably best known for his ones about uh, his breakups, and this does have some of that in here. Um, but it also has other things about his life. Um, but he's he's such a good storyteller, and he's just yeah he. He's just like you really you feel like you like kind of get to know him by reading it. Um, the thing I notice about his stuff too is I've have the incredible change bots that he did. Oh yeah, yeah that transformer That's send up. So funny! <laughs> oh my god, he's and so funny. He intentionally drew it in the style that looks like it was done with markers, like like in a kid's notebook kind yeah. of thing, right? And, yeah. And and that was the moment when when I looked at that, I said, "This is like the comics I was writing when I was in eighth grade about yeah. transformers," <laughs> and it felt like I was. It felt just coming out with that. 13 year old 14 year old yeah. voice and and I get that from this too it's like sort of like looking at a lot of like uh, early 20 something anxiety through the yeah. voice of a 14 yeah. year old does that sound fair yeah definitely well he has also yeah he does kind of have this more child look drawing um, that right. he kind of adds and he's yeah he's just really brilliant in how he does that it's it's so great music Love it. Um, I'd say maybe uh, Andrew Bird which actually they do have a whole there's a whole story in here about Andrew Bird and um, so, yeah, and I love Andrew Bird, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it has of course the same you do, kind yeah. of. <laughs> film, film. Um, I would say this is a lot more of the kind of what you were saying. With, I would say maybe if you liked, like, 
Garden State or something, yeah. you'd probably like this. Yeah, Garden State with a lot of those slow shots of just looking at the guy while he's kind of looking up at the sky sad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty yeah. good comparison with Jeffrey Brown. So, cool. Yeah, if you enjoy Garden State, if you enjoy Andrew Bird, you will like Little Things, a memoir in slices by Jeffrey Brown. Uh, Lorian was po posting in the chat, uh, back to uh, the 20th Century Boys book, she said that Memento has the same <laughs> intensity, confusing but intriguing time skips. Okay. Have you seen Memento? I, if I have, it's been a while. I honestly can't remember. The one where the guy like wakes up and he doesn't remember anything and he has little notes that he made to himself and the story oh. goes backwards and everybody got excited about the backwards storytelling. Back anyway. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so okay, <laughs> there we go. We got the movie comparison. If you like Memento, you'll like 20th Century Boys. All right, awesome. I guess it's my turn. Okay, now, now let's let's represent <laughs> um, for for uh, you know the superhero guys because this is a book that everybody has heard of, but so few people I know have actually I've read it. I've never heard of this. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. No. No, you have. This is the comic that got me to be a cartoonist. <laughs> this is my... Maybe I have. I don't know. <laughs> this was my manga. This was my entry point. Crisis and Infinite Earths. Now, okay, on paper, it's a dumb idea. It's a, it was a 12-issue series conceived to knit together uh, 30 to 50 years worth of continuity that was all conflicting. There was, like, multiple Superman, multiple Flashes. Well, let's make it all one cohesive thing where there's only one definitive Superman. One, and it was, it was just a big marketing events it tied into a whole bunch of other comics so yes it was very crass and it was very marketing but it was also really exceptionally written for what it was where it was essentially uh the the odyssey but for with dc comic superheroes it's every superhero <laughs> in the dc universe versus one guy and when you look at these covers by george perez it's Ooh. like look at the density on there wow. man so, okay, you take a, a crass idea and then you, you make art out of it like they did where you look at these pages and there are upwards of 14 panels on every page and it's very, very dense but very clear. That's a challenge. I defy anybody to try to do that, do that kind of density of action and storytelling, changing scenes and still have it be readable and look at all the look at the, how many word balloons are on these pages they don't do like, like superhero comics like this anymore but um the reason that i would point people at it is uh regardless of whatever genre of storytelling you like is this is i i would call this the comics artist's comic because of what perez does he does so many different storytelling tricks and he invents so many different new ways to approach a page. He finds different ways to do simultaneity. There's a scene in here with Supergirl where she's fighting the big bad guy. And uh, let's see if I can find it. See, this thing always gets talked about because of like the whole tying in universes together and the marketing stuff. But what I think is really compelling about it is here's the scene where he takes one big moment. Let's see if we can see this on the camera. One big moment and he create sub moments with just a different panel border on there oh, right yeah. so like oh, we, we so can cool. consider it as one moment but then also it's her blasting in and smashing the guy in the face kind of thing so mm -hmm. yeah it's people in their underwear beating each other up <laughs> it's universes being devoured by giant white clouds uh silly stuff but it is in my opinion one of the finest comics ever made regardless of oh here's another one Here's another scene right here where like this this narrative is progressing in this direction, overlapping of uh, these different reaction sequences during this big fight and everything. So, uh, you know, superheroes not everybody's thing, but there are excellent superhero comics out there. And and you know what? This is one of those excellent superhero comics where uh, they don't play the the whole uh, adult situations card, where it's like, oh well, if this is going to be for grown-ups, let's have a rape in there someplace, and that that's good. You know? <laughs> uh, this is something where kids can read it and adults can read it, and it's good for both. Um, not that that's like a clincher for me, but that's just something that's worth noting. And and I mean, I also think uh, so. It, it's accessible to the general public, but it also uh, is something where I think cartoonists would benefit from reading it. Music, I would give this one Van Halen or uh, John Williams. Like a combination of Van Halen and John Williams. <laughs> all fading back and forth. Epic drama, but then also like rocking parts. It's like, yeah! Uh, movie. Um, oh, I don't want to say a Michael Bay film, but something that, like if Michael Bay did really good movies. Like if Michael Bay made art, that's what Christ the <laughs> for Earths would be. It would have all the explosions and everything falling apart, but it would be also like, it would, it would be something that would be for the ages. But it just wouldn't be just like uh, a movie director going, awesome! You know, <laughs> like Cake Boss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gail. Okay, speaking of superheroes, man, this is Su Superman, Secret Identity. Um, basically, one of my favorite Superman comics of all time, because I don't read that much Superman. This is kind of, I guess, the reverse end of the spectrum, in which you have a guy, um, you know, dressing up, being cool, but not really beating up that many people. It's more life-ish. Um, 
to spin off. It's in a universe where there is Superman, like the comics. Um, he's a pop culture, whatever, whatever. So a pair of parents in Kansas think it'd be a great idea to name their kid Clark, Clark Kent. So he grows up with that hang over his head. Hey, Clark, you're going to fly off and be awesome wait a minute, today. Wait a so this is actually not about Clark Kent, the real Clark Kent? Yeah, this is about yeah. A kid who's this is named about Clark a kid Kent. who's named Clark Interesting. Kent. Interesting. Who, um, in his teens, discovers that he actually does have superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wants to grow up and be a journalist, and it's like, well, shoot, this is all over, man. <laughs> so it's about a kid whose life maps itself onto the Superman legend. Yeah, yeah. How he, like, grows up, learns how to deal with this, um... And kind of becomes a person in his own right, like making that name his own. Kurt Busiek has written some of the best comics in the industry. Uh, if you're going to read a superhero comic, look for his name. You're going to read something good, you know. <laughs> also, Stuart Immonen, uh, Immonen uh, is a fantastic artist, too. His stuff is really yeah, pretty yeah. to look at. Isn't I just, it? like, love the look of the entire thing. It's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of art eye candy, regardless of what what kinds of stories that you like, right? Like, really mm -hmm. subtle and uh, clear, beautiful inking. So, uh, music. Ooh, um... Hmm. I might double the Andrew Bird for this. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Something like, you know, kind of mellow, quiet, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mellow, yeah. quiet, nice, like uh, classical or like uh, what kind of like like popular bands would you think of that people listen to? Like, so, so so you're saying not Lady Gaga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like may maybe a more acoustic kind of person, you know? Okay. Yo-Yo Ma? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> no, right, what, what kind of, uh, I'm, I'm guessing if you like the show Smallville, you'd probably dig this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like for those who haven't watched Smallville, it's basically like the Superman story, but like more focusing on like the Clark story and the and the kind of teen mm -hmm. drama kind of stuff, but with the fights. Yeah, the yeah. Dispersed. More, more about character than the action part. I there think. you go. That's yeah. a better way of saying it than what I said. I'm gonna tick <laughs> off some some Smallville fans. All right, we got time for one more, and then we got to bring Eli in. Oh, Steph, you're you're right, up. Pick right. pick your favorite. <laughs> God. All right. Choices. <sighs> well, just just throw a couple on there and just say a few right. words about each. A couple. Each. All right. So here's three <laughs> of them. All right. My my last three. Uh, Octopus Pie is a great web comic. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's about two roommates and basically their life in Brooklyn. And um, yeah. So if you were ever twenty something in Brooklyn, you would enjoy this. Um, it has very great. Very clean animation style. She actually yeah, has a degree yeah. from SVA, School of Visual Arts and Animation, and she's has some of I feel like really some of the best drawings in web comics. They're they're very simple, but um, you she really she really has it all done. She has great chops, I would say. And as you uh, said, it's a web comic, so you can start reading and it's it a right web now. Comic, so you can go on octopuspotty <laughs> dot com. Yeah, um, you probably all heard of Fun Home. It's yeah, one yeah. of my favorite comics. Um, the inking is gorgeous, first of all. I I loved Alison Bechtel in high school. I actually haven't read much of her stuff afterwards, but I'm totally excited for her new book to come out. And this uh, God, this tells a great story about um, a girl, her Alison Bechtel, and her relationship with her father, and um, basically their sexualities and... Yeah, there's like this, yeah, there's yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of like really sophisticated stuff in there. Yeah, right? it's really um and then this is just great Let's book that this is one of my favorites from Troop this year. 142. Troop 142 by Mike Dawson. So okay. this is it's very um this is basically about a bunch of teenagers in Boy Scout camp and it I feel like it's one of the things that I've read that's best captured like how kind of teenagers interact with each other. They they're they're all kind of jerks to each other but it's it's very realistic um and i think it's really great so i would actually <laughs> for movies i would say if you liked like super bad you'd probably really like Ooh, oh there we go all there right go. Yeah. cool all right real quick we'll throw out our last couple ones me and gail um, Bring it. i'm gonna throw on lewis trondheim's little nothings which is a series of autobio vignettes uh, strips sort of by Louis Trondheim, the French cartoonist, but he draws himself and all the other characters as animals. He is a bird, but it has... Um, <laughs> But don't let that th let you think that th this is for the kids because it certainly is not. Uh, there's uh, what I would call sophisticated, sometimes bleak humor, but always sweet and, and thoughtful and funny. Uh, 
you know, and, and, and I, when I say it's not for kids, I think it's more that they just wouldn't care. Because, like, there's a strip here about him getting bitten by a lot of mosquitoes and counting the, the, the bites, you know. But his stuff is always really, really funny and uh, really fun to read. And then I'm also going to throw in Ernie Colon uh, recently did a uh, book about Vlad the Impaler with Sid Jacobson. These are the guys who did the 9-11 Commission mm -hmm. Report. And uh, Ernie Colon is always a master of his craft. I'll read anything that his name is on because I know that it's going to have really terrific uh, designs on the pages and it's going to be, uh, he, he's, he's a master storyteller and he could take any subject and if you've ever known somebody like this who's such a good storyteller that you could say, tell me a story about, you know, shoes and then they can captivate you, that's Ernie Cologne. So um, anything his name is on, I, I would recommend to anybody. And uh, this stuff is just just really solid. He's, he's, uh, this, this guy worked on Casper the Friendly Ghost but then also worked on Eric, Lord of Thunder uh, later on. But uh, so he could do like really scary stuff, really funny stuff and... But anyway, love his stuff. So, Gail, <laughs> couple? Okay. Um, Ultimate Spider-Man. Yes, Peter Parker is dead in one universe, but there is a cool new kid taking up the mantle. It's, um, you know, his trials and tribulations and learning to deal with his new powers. Morning Glories. Um, it's uh, kind of like Lost Meets Runaways it's been billed as. Um, new prep school with a lot of unusual secrets and mysteries. And finally, Black Sod. Um, sp two Spanish guys made this crazy awesome like uh, wait no this war is furries i don't want to look at it <laughs> but <laughs> look at how lush and gorgeous it is <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding no this looks this yeah looks yeah detective solves murder mysteries um it deals with uh race murder um communists even and it's all just gorgeous and really well acted Love it. So it's taking a lot of like the styles and symbols of like Disney animation and mapping yeah, it onto yeah. a, a story for adults. Exactly. Which is another thing that's hard to to get adults really signed on to, isn't it? Right. You know, is this idea that like cartoons can be for you cartoons too? Cartoons are for people. They're for people, yeah. they're not just for children. <laughs> so uh, I think we gave a pretty good picture of the landscape. I have I had a lot more, but you know uh, we got to let Eli uh, Nyberger in here. So what we're I'm going to ask you guys to do is to. Oh, right. uh, Take your books and step out for a second. We'll let Eli in. I'm going to make some noise about a couple things. Uh, you guys will come, can come back at the end uh, as we close because I wanted to make some noise about some appearances that you're going to be making. Sure thing. Um, but we got events at the Ann Arbor District Library after all. Uh, let's see. This would be... I want to say it is on Sunday. It is Sunday. Sunday, January 15th, 2012, from 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, open Photoshop lab time at the downtown branch of the Ann Arbor District Library, where uh, three hours, show up, get to, get to bring your own artwork. We can scan it, and you can put it on a uh, Macintosh computer and uh, try your hand at doing some digital coloring. Uh, this is a pretty awesome resource that AADL is making available to the, uh, the local community. And uh, I think you'd be crazy not to take advantage of it if you don't have a full version of Photoshop or Photoshop Elements at home uh, or a nice Mac to work on. So, uh, again, that's uh, January 15th, 1 to 4 p.m. And uh, other than that, I don't have any other uh, events that I wanted to point out. So I'll just go turn and say, hello, Eli. Hello, Jersey. <laughs> How are you? How was that for vamping? Did I do okay? That's very nicely done. <laughs> Happy New Year. How's it uh, going? Yeah, ha Happy New Year to you. Good to see you. So, um what, 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 what do you got to, to share with well, us? Well, I brought here? a couple things, and I, uh, I, these are all online. So I brought, uh, took the liberty of having Matt set this up. So let me uh, jump to one of them here. Um, let's see. Let me make sure I got this right. Almost. Oh, here we go. All right. Oh, Ben so, Hutchins. Are you familiar with Ben Hutchins? Mm. This is an Australian guy. Uh, he does some just simply unreal line work and illustration and his stuff is so funny and so surreal you might call him a um less narcissistic and depressed australian james kachalka <laughs> does that okay. does that fit <laughs> that sounds okay good. <laughs> so for example none of this is ever about him but okay. he also writes a lot of a lot of music you know and you kachalka's all got his all of his game boy music and stuff like that yeah. um ben hutchins does these songs with uh synthesized lead vocals you know so it's like mac and talk doing all the lead vocals and they're ridiculous songs about being a pirate who has diarrhea and all this kind of stuff but he's got a couple of different ongoing series one of them is called lesson master master of lessons 
And basically, the, the setup is that there's always someone who's uh, rude or, or uh, clueless or unusual, and then lesson master appears <laughs> and teaches them a lesson. And in this case, we find out that perhaps canonically, lesson master's name is Joe, and he's showing this ugly American who's visiting Australia that the word Joe is a person's name in Australia, not a drink. And, and then, then at the end, we get a ribbon. Lesson, learned. lesson learned. Okay. And he flies away. <laughs> so there's a whole series of Lesson Master. I love it. It's all so funny. Then he also does this thing called Thunder Mates, which is basically rewording superhero comics. Oh, okay. okay? okay. So, for example, New Mag and More World, Make Room, Here Comes Adventurers of Adventure. The thing you simply have to understand about me, woof, is that I don't play by the same rules as the other chumps. No sweat. I'm pretty tolerant of different kinds of people, you know, and it goes on. <laughs> so basically, I think that this is Captain America trying to come out to whoever this guy is. I, I Bucky. Mean, yeah. Bucky. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, then he does posters and his music is all kinds of stuff. His illustrations are just fantastic. So Ben Hutchins is a really awesome guy and Lesson Master is one of my favorite comics anywhere. Uh, another thing I just wanted to mention uh, is Gingerbread Girl, which um, is a really fantastic one-shot graphic novel by a husband and wife team, Colleen Coover and Paul Tobin, and or Paul Tobin rather. Where did the first one go? And the whole thing is right now online on Top Shelf 2.0, which is their sort of their blog. Um, but what you know, it's a very very cutely drawn and Reminds put of, together like, story. Comics. Yeah, it's very archy. I mean, it's it's uh, you know the braces and the freckles and all that stuff. Um, so the whole thing is online. But basically, the plot of the story is that somewhere in the middle of her parents' ugly divorce. Um, she made up a story, or maybe didn't make up a story, about her father, the brain surgeon, removing her homunculi from her brain, which is, you know, the image of the human body that's mapped in sensory apparatus in your brain. So, like, she, like, can't feel emotions. And she believed that that homunculi turned into her twin sister, who she kind of is... And it's never quite clear. Is this wow. an imaginary friend? Is this person crazy, or is this real? Who knows? What's really unique about this book is that it moves through a bunch of di whoa is that it is a Skype window uh, <laughs> it moves through a bunch of different narrators throughout the book it's very much told in in sort of first person so she starts talking about herself then her girlfriend comes over and talks about her and then the guy on the street is telling the story and then a flying by pigeon is your narrator for a while does so the it, tone change with each new oh, narrator oh yeah, yeah 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 each one's got their own thing and they're telling you a little piece of the story and it's like why does this pigeon know so much about her and so <laughs> there's a lot of really interesting fun stuff. It's a short, quick read, but it's really beautifully done and plotted. And um, totally unsatisfying finish, but a really <laughs> a really enjoyable story. So I like that one very much. I just wanted to point that one out. Um, and one other quick thing, which just in case, you know, we mentioned a couple of, of web comics. I know uh, Meredith Grand's Octopus Pie is one of my yeah. favorite web comics. But uh, Rich Stevens of Diesel, Diesel Sweeties is kind of in some ways one of the grand old men of the uh, web comics. At one point, his strip was syndicated in newspapers. He yeah. started as a web comic, he tried syndication, and it was one of those things where he found that it wasn't worth it. You know, and it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's often the. Uh, it's you know it's as close as a cartoonist gets to getting signed, right? You know, yeah. for a certain type of cartoonist, that was like the pinnacle. Oh right? yeah, especially and, in the early two thousands, for right. sure. Yeah, that was a big and deal. And he pulled it off, and he was like, "This sucks," you know. So I think it's and one of the things that's really interesting to me is how he monetizes his audience because you know his main work stream, like we're always talking about, mm -hmm. is free for anyone to view. Um, he has just a fantastic style, real master of the pixel art. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing, and here's his Ziggy Stardust tee, which he's closing out. He always makes sure to let people know when he's closing out his shirts. He's got these great ties that are made by this company here in, in the Detroit area. Um, I forget what the company is called. But one of the coolest things he does is he'll do portraits for you for commission. So, like, for $60, he'll draw a pixel version of you. And that's, what, that's where my avatar comes from. Right. I was going to uh, say, the Lotricus avatar. That's right. Yeah. And this year for the holidays, I had him do, he did my whole family. So now we have that framed pixel art up on the wall. And, you know, so it, it was really cool. And it's a way that he, you know, it's commissioned work, but it's very doable for him within his workflow. And I think it's a, it's a really interesting way to make, to, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say squeeze money out of your super fans, but give your super fans value 
in, ex, in this, excess of your content. This, yeah, this is something that we can clarify something you've said on the show many times is that you know you feel skeptical about people paying for bits. Right. Well, you just paid for bits, but you didn't pay for bits. because you paid, paid for the for, bits to be created. You, yeah, that's right. You paid for the creation of the bits specifically for you to create this one-off thing that is just your thing right. from the guy that you like yep. right that's the value is 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 the scarcity is the the guy's time the that's guy right. the guy's attention to the thing exactly right so instead of putting all of his comics behind a paywall let's just do custom services right, right? and custom products right so like yeah the the kitty tote bag i was following along with that where yep. uh he did a kitty tote bag and he put it to the audience like should i put the the, the reverse side of the kitty walking away with the, the little x kitty butt on it or right. not you know and he let the fans vote they voted so then he made the tote bag with the kitty on both sides that's right? right so so yeah, yeah. Uh, R. Stevens, Rich Stevens. Uh, yep. Very, DieselCDs.com. And, and and plus he's he's I think his stuff because it uh, is in that pixel art style. It is uh, much more accessible to the general public who's not going to get too hung up on some of the more uh, garish symbolism of yep. comics. Sometimes, sure. right? It's it, probably an easier entry point. For well, it's the, very the it's friendly. Computer. It has an eight bit feeling to it. Yeah. You know, and people don't. It's very easy to parse because it's low resolution. You know, yeah. so so human eyes can just take it all right in. But yeah. he really does a great job with the uh, the 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 faces and things like that. This is Nipples the Bear. We were talking about furries <laughs> a little earlier. This is Nipples the Bear, and it looks like he made it with Little Sis last night. So, um, but you can see he goes through a wide range of expressions here without even having pupils to let you know where he's looking. So you know, he just does a really great job with his stuff. Consummate professional, and uh, I think that you know anyone who's uh, interested in comics should be looking at his business model, if not his work directly, because it's, it's great stuff. Well, cool. Well, thanks, Eli. That was, that was oh, some no good problem. food for thought, good recommendations, and also like a nice little note for the cartoonists who are watching uh, to look at some uh, business, uh, get their business kung fu up to up to <laughs> uh, up to snuff. So, okay. Well, then we'll just close out, and uh, I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, the Anarchist District Library for letting us do the show. Oh, I should throw in a note. That uh, we're changing our update schedule, right? We're going right. to go to a twice monthly. Uh, so every other week is what we're going to do for now, and this is to accommodate some different things that are going to going on at ADL. We've got kids secret projects, secret secret projects, yes, <laughs> and then also kids read comics coming to ADL. We got yep. a lot coming up this this uh, this late winter and, and early spring, so uh, we're going to scale back on the updates. But you know what? If we find out that the demand is there, we can always go back to weekly, uh, or, or and we'll probably wind up getting some special guests who are not going to be able to fit into the bi-weekly schedule and we might yeah. do some extra episodes in between so uh but but for now yeah it's going to be every other wednesday is when we're gonna do the live show at wednesday at 12 30 p.m eastern time uh steph stephanie manheim can be found at stephanie steph the artist on twitter uh, you can also find her at coffeespooncomics.com. She's going to be at TCAF and at SPX this year. Links will be in the show notes. So, uh, And then uh, Gail Williams can be found at patbird.gailsor.com. Kelvarin on Twitter, K-E-L-V-A-R-I-N. And, uh, yeah, you can watch for more of her updates there. She's on the Tumblers, too. So thanks again, Eli. Thanks again, uh, everybody, for downloading and listening. Until next time, I've been Jersey Droz of J uh, comicsarecreate.com and Jersey on Twitter. Okay, bye.